Hi everyone, Jane from Pandemonium Art Gallery here. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this fun holiday bird scene. Now even though this end painting is holiday themed for Christmas or just winter in general, you can still take this and create it for any season. Um, I've had people make this into a Halloween painting, just give the tree a little bit of a different shape, use some different colors, do leaves instead of um, a light strand. You can do bats or pumpkins if you like. You could make it a spring painting with flowers and leaves and brown birds or bluebirds. So even though this is a holiday theme, take the techniques here and you could do one for every season or one for any holiday and one for any occasion really. Make sure you check out the video description below for a full list of materials. Go ahead and get your canvas, your brushes, your water, your paper towels, and let's get started. Today I'm painting on a 12 by 16 inch canvas board, and as always, you can paint on any type or size of canvas that you like. We are going to use a one inch flat brush for the background, a half inch angle brush, a small flat brush. This is a number six. It's about a quarter of an inch across and a small round brush of whatever size you're comfortable with. This is a number two. You're also gonna need a clean, dry paper towel that has not been folded at all. We're gonna start by painting our background, and for the background, we're going to be using titanium white, primary blue, and Mars black. There will be other colors that we use later on. Make sure you check out the description below for a full list of materials. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and paint in this background using the one inch flat brush. I'm gonna wet it in my jar and then just wipe the excess water off on the edge. The technique that I'm gonna be using to fill in this background is very, very similar to my smoky background technique, which is why I made that video for you. It's a technique that I use a lot. The main difference here is that I'm going to be using all three of these colors, but I am going to focus on blending them in a little bit more than I do in the smoky background video. You certainly can leave it streaky if that's what you prefer. For this one, a lot of the background is going to be covered by the next layer of paint, and I don't want those two elements to compete for attention, so I just smooth this one in a little bit more. It's the same, you're just going to go over the pieces a little bit more than you do with the regular smoky background. So I'm gonna start by loading up with some white. White is gonna be my base color here because I don't want this background to be too terribly dark. So white is gonna be the color that helps travel the blue and the black throughout. So I'm gonna grab a little corner of black and a little corner of blue. And again, the brush strokes just overlap slightly. And since I do want this to be a little more blended in, I'm gonna just give a little bit more attention to that. Remember to press flat to lay paint down and use the end of the brush to blend paint together. Don't worry about the direction of your brush strokes here. We are gonna cover a lot of this with the next little bits of elements. And so you don't have to really worry about the direction that your brush strokes are going. I am gonna put a hill at the bottom of my image, but I'm not exactly sure where I want that hill to be yet, so I'm just taking the color all the way to the bottom. decided you wanted that darker you could definitely go over it again or just use more blue and black in the first place. Now let's go ahead and draw the ground. So I haven't cleaned off my brush. I'm going to use the exact same colors. I'm just going to dip my brush very very slightly into the jar of water. I didn't fully submerge it in the water. I just touched it to the edge of the water. Now I'm going to load up with white 
And really that's all I'm gonna load up with right now. I'm gonna make kind of the snowy ground. So I'm just gonna make a simple hill that just goes from one side to the other, but in kind of a, a little bumpy shape so that it's just not flat and boring. And I'm only covering about the bottom, I don't know, about the bottom fifth of the canvas. And see, I drew it with the edge of my brush like this. That helps keep a really crisp line. See how sharp that edge is? If you try and draw it this way, when you press flat, see how the brush fans out? then you lose control of the edge. So I'm just gonna fill this in. Now that I've got my line drawn, I don't have to worry about losing the shape of it. I'm just gonna fill it in with the white. And since my background is still wet, the white is picking up a little bit of the colors in the background. But now I'm gonna grab a tiny bit more white and a teeny speck of blue, teeny tiny speck of blue. And I'm gonna give some little shadows into the snow here. See how that little tiny slash of blue makes it appear that there's a little depression in the snow. Again, a teeny speck of blue. And I'm wiping on the edge, on the chisel edge, to get rid of that little speck of blue, and then just smoothing over top of it. But I'm not trying to smooth out those little lines. Put some there. And maybe I just want to highlight the edge of the hills with some pure white. Okay, so I have a small admission. When I was painting this, I did the ground, but I should have done the next layer to the background first. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I may have to touch up the ground a little bit, and that's not a big deal. The reason I'm stopping to tell you this is because sometimes when you're new to painting, a small mistake can really throw you off and you can feel like you've ruined it and it might prompt you to stop or scrap what you've done and maybe start over again somewhere else, but you don't always have to do that. Um, for the most part, you can save just about anything. So the next part is going to be layering over top of this, which now it's going to layer over top of the hills a little bit. Depending on how dry the canvas is at that point, I can either just wipe the paint off that gets on the hills, or I can just take um, more white and blue paint and just paint over the hills one more time. So being that this is a video and you guys aren't actually here with me. I very easily could have just stopped recording, painted it over one more time to make it appear that I don't make mistakes, which I make a lot of mistakes. Everybody who paints does. So please do not let a small mistake or even a big mistake um, dissuade you from painting. Just paint over it and move along. So I'm gonna let this dry, and once it's dry, we'll come back and we'll finish layering the background, and I'll show you how I'm gonna take care of it going over the hill. All right, so now we're gonna put what I like to refer to as the frosty bits around the edge here. So to me, this kind of looks like frost on a window or maybe snow flurries. This is where the paper towel comes into play. So what we're gonna do is kind of make a little bit of a kind of a puffy dome on the top of the paper towel. About like that. And then I'm gonna smash it flat. So I've got kind of this irregular shape. I have my big background brush that I've cleaned off and then I dried it off on another paper towel a little bit. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of white paint and gently paint it onto the surface here. It doesn't have to cover the whole thing. You just want some, a little bit more. Now the important thing while you're doing this is that whenever you get more paint, you want to start on the edge. You never want to take a freshly painted paper towel and stick it right in the center because you're going to have a big glob of that white paint there. 
So we're gonna start at all the edge and slowly work into the middle. And as we work, the paint will lessen until in about the middle, there will be almost no white paint coming off onto the canvas. Let me show you what I mean. So I have my paper towel and I'm gonna press it right to the edge here. And I'm gonna put a good amount of pressure. I'm not wiping, I'm just pressing. And I'm gonna slowly start working toward the middle. Notice that each paper towel, each time the paper towel touches, it overlaps the previous one. And pretty soon there's almost no paint coming off. And I feel like I didn't even get enough over here, so I'm gonna add quite a bit more paint this time. And start on the edge again. Also notice that every time my paper towel touches, when I take it off, I slowly I rotate my hand a little bit so that every time I put it back down, it's in a slightly different position than before. And notice how slowly I'm working toward the middle. Every single one of these blots overlaps the one before it by about half. If you don't overlap them, you're gonna end up with these polka dots. And we don't want the polka dots. We want a nice smooth transition from heavy snow on the edges to a little bit lighter in the middle. And see, I'm putting pretty good pressure there. I'm putting almost full pressure. If you happen to get a spot that has too heavy of paint, let me show you. So if I go right there and I've got this heavy blob of paint, all you have to do is just keep going over it. Just go over it and see it kind of lifted it off and smoothed it out. Now just keep going over the entire thing, focusing the heavier amounts to the outer edges and the lighter amounts to the middle. Just go ahead and go over your hill if you accidentally painted it like I did. You don't want the snow to stop just above it because if there were snow blowing around, it wouldn't just, you know, magically stop two, three feet above the ground. So go ahead and take it over the top of it. Now as it turns out, you can't really see where the snow came down over my mountain anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. If yours does show up, just take your brush with a little bit more of your white and your blue mixture and just smooth over top of it again. Now we're gonna work on our tree, and I am gonna put the tree right about in the center. I'm gonna use my half inch angle brush and some black paint. So I'm gonna load up with some black paint here. And the first thing we wanna do is draw the main trunk of the tree. This is gonna be a fairly simple shaped tree. So I'm gonna take my angle brush with the point pointing down and I'm gonna start you know, right, about, right about there. And I'm gonna draw a trunk that kind of weaves back and forth a little bit as it goes. I'm not paying attention to um, how thick it is at the bottom. I'm not trying to get that perfectly smooth shape. I'm just going to sketch out the general area of my tree. So 
It's about like that. Now that my trunk is sketched out on there, I can start filling it out so that it's nice and thin at the top and nice and wide at the bottom. So I'm actually gonna start at the top. For me, it's easier sometimes to start with very light pressure and work down into heavier pressure. If you're more comfortable working from heavier pressure to light pressure, then you can do that too. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna put my hand on the canvas and I'm just using the very tip of the brush here. And as I come down, I'm gonna slowly put more pressure on it until I have a wider trunk at the bottom. Notice at the bottom of my tree, I left it unfinished. You could draw roots coming out if you like. What I'm gonna do is once I'm completely finished, I'm gonna take a little bit more white and bring it up over the bottom so it appears that the snow is deep and kind of covering the bottom of the tree. Also notice that I didn't put the curl on the very tip of the tree. We're gonna do all of that later. So don't worry about trying to make your branches and also the curls on the end. We're just gonna take one thing at a time. Now for my branches, I'm gonna use this little rectangle brush. And the reason I'm gonna do that is, there's actually a couple reasons. First of all, you can use any brush that you're comfortable with. You could use an angle brush or a round brush. But one thing that I noticed that a lot of people have, a tr have trouble with when they're painting branches is getting a nice smooth shape and maintaining a taper. Kind of like what we did here with that smooth taper. Using the flat brush, we're gonna use it flat so it always stays horizontal. As I go with the branches, I'm not gonna turn it. I'm not gonna make sure that I turn the brush like that as I go. I'm gonna use it always perfectly level to the ground. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take away a little bit of the pressure for trying to make a smooth tapered branch. It's gonna give us a little bit more of a whimsical um, kind of a calligraphy style branch. So the branches are going to be thinner and fatter in some areas and that'll be a really fun whimsical shape. So I've got this brush. It's a little bit damp. I'm going to get some black paint on it and I'm actually going to start at the top of the tree. Now I want this to kind of have a triangle shape, almost like a Christmas tree, but you could do it however you want. So I'm gonna start here at the top with the edge, just because this branch is so thin. I'm gonna start with the edge just there. And I'm gonna come up and out just a little bit. Just a, a little, let's see. I'm gonna do a shape like this. Just about like that. Off of each side. start here. I've got my hand on my canvas just to give me a little bit of control and I'm going to come up and out. These little branches you might have to turn your brush a bit just to get it to blend in with the trunk. My paint's a little thin there that's why it's see-through. If that happens just get a little bit more paint. You've got too much water in your brush. So I'm going to do another one just below here, about the same length. And we're going to do that all the way down. Each one is going to get slightly longer until at the bottom here, it's going to be about hand width. Those angles on the bottom, you can Take your brush and smooth them down in.
Now we've got our tree all painted in. If you have some spots where the black paint is a little see-through, just let it dry and you can go over it again once it's completely dry. So now we're gonna move on to the little round brush and we're gonna start adding the curls. And we can make little adjustments to the shape of some of these branches as we go too. So this brush is wet and just kind of clicked off so there's no drips. And I'm gonna load it up with some black paint. Make sure to keep turning it so that the tip of that brush stays nice and round. Now I'm gonna start with this one. And since my tree kind of moves this way, if I'm gonna put a curl up here, it's probably not gonna curl this way, right? Because the shape of the tree is going back and forth. So if it's going this way, we're gonna keep that curl going that same direction. All right, I move my camera over a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna start right where my tree leaves off, keep that shape going, and turn it into a little curl. Notice I'm just using the very tip, the very tip of my brush, and I'm not moving my hand. My hand is placed stationary on the canvas. The only thing that's moving is my fingers. Almost like if you were if you were writing your name, your your arm wouldn't be hovering above the paper, and you wouldn't be writing your name with your whole arm if you're just signing something. You would put your hand here and you would sign like that. So you're gonna do the same thing here. I'm just moving the tips of my fingers. I'm gonna widen that out just a little bit more since the branch below it got a little wider than I expected it to. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Since it goes down and up, I'm gonna bring the curl up rather than down. I'm just gonna smooth some of this out a little bit. And I'm gonna bring this along here, back up. And a little curl. I'm just gonna fill that in a little bit so the black is more solid. Just remember that if you're having a hard time getting your black paint to be completely opaque and cover the background, then you just need a little bit more water on your brush. The water will help the black paint spread better. If the water is making the paint too transparent, then you just have too much water so just wipe a tiny bit of the water off your brush and get more paint.
So there's our tree. The next thing we're gonna do is draw our bird or birds, however many you like. I'm gonna show you how to do a basic little chickadee type bird and then you can go from there and add several small ones or just one, whichever you prefer. For my bird, I'm gonna use alizarin crimson. And I've washed off my small brush and that's the brush I'm gonna to use to sketch out my bird. So I'm gonna get some of this crimson, turning the brush to keep it nice and round. And I've decided I want my bird to sit on this branch here. Now, the basic shape of my bird is gonna be kind of like an elongated S. So if you picture an S is you know, like that. So if you stretch it out and tilt it this way a little bit, you're gonna have more of that type of a shape. So that's the shape we're gonna focus on while making this bird. So I've got my crimson and I'm just gonna make the center shape first. So I'm gonna start here where his beak would be and I'm gonna come over and down and back up. So that's where my bird is gonna sit. And no, that doesn't look anything like a bird yet. Now we're gonna make some outside lines, one for the top of his head down his back to his tail and one from the tip of his beak down to his belly and up to his tail. And we're gonna make sure to connect at these points these lines I'm gonna draw, they're also elongated S's. So I'm gonna start here at his beak. Hope you can see this, I'll try and get in an awkward angle. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna come around and we're gonna give him a belly that sits right on the branch. Comes around here and meets up his tail. So his tail is going to be about like that. Now we're going to start at his beak again and we're going to do the top of his head. So it's going to come back and up, down a little bit, and back up to the tip of his tail. So I gave him a little bit of a longer tail than my initial shape. Now that we have him drawn, I'm gonna get some paint with my little flat brush. You can use an angle brush if you like. And I'm just gonna fill him in. Red is very, very see-through as you can tell. So I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'm just gonna let it be. Once it's dry, I'll come back and put another coat on it. I'm just gonna draw one other little bird and then we'll move on. There's our birds. We're just waiting for them to dry a bit so we can do another coat. While we wait for them to dry, we're going to draw the little cord of the holiday lights. So I, again, I've got this little brush cleaned off and it's slightly damp to make sure that my black paint stays nice and fluid. I'm gonna roll this in there, keeping a nice sharp point. And the cord is just gonna be a thin line. It's gonna just weave in and out of the tree. Now I kind of want it to look like the birds are decorating the tree, so I'm gonna have the cord touch their beak so it looks like they're holding it. This is almost gonna be like a scribble. We're gonna start at one point and just kind of wind around. Don't be intimidated by this part. I don't know why, but a lot of people find this part to be intimidating and it's just a very free form shape. There should be no intimidation. Make sure that you keep your hand or at least a pinky on the canvas to control your pressure so that your cord doesn't get fat and skinny and fat and skinny. At this first passing, if the paint starts to fuzz out, just let it go, just sketch the cord on there. Then you can come back and go back over it and sharpen it. So I've got my paint, my brush is nice and round. I'm gonna have my cord kind of just starting right up here.
See how I brought it around and looped that little piece? Those are the kind of things you wanna do. So I'm gonna bring it over here, down to the little bird's beak. See, I have no plan about where this cord is gonna go when I start out. I just start, just start doing it. And I'm gonna let it kind of trail off here. Now that I've got it on there, I'm gonna make sure that my brush is nice and damp. I'm gonna get some heavier paint and just um, make sure that the cord is bold, not so faded out. All right, our light strand is on. Our birds are dry, so I'm gonna take the flat brush again and just go back over the birds, make sure that they're not see-through. I'm gonna use quite a bit of paint here. See how I've kind of got it glopped onto my brush? I'm gonna put a good heavy coat down so I don't have to do several coats on the bird. If you have to do more than two coats, that's fine. Alternately, you can paint the bird white first and then do a coat of red over top of it. It will still be a little transparent to that. You'll get a little bit more of a pink tone, but that's okay. I'm not really worried about painting it on the branch. That blue is, or the black on the branch is gonna be really hard for this red to cover. So I'm just gonna let his body stop where it meets the branch. Very, very light pressure on my brush right now just to smooth out that paint. If I put too much pressure on my brush at this point, I'll remove some paint and my bird will continue to be transparent. Let's go ahead and cover up the base of this tree while we're here. My brush is cleaned off. I'm gonna get some white, not a, not a ton. I just want a little bit. And I'm gonna grab a hint of blue. I'm just gonna mix it in there a bit. Okay, I'm gonna start over here and slowly in a horizontal line come over and up and down. So I'm gonna kind of mirror these type of shapes just on a much smaller scale. And now I can swipe over that very gently with just the tip of the brush. blend it in. Now we're going to put Christmas lights on the strand and we're going to use this brush and I've got light green permanent, cadmium red, primary yellow, and my primary blue that we used on the background. To do the little Christmas lights on the strand we're going to use this large brush 
and that's because it's got a rather large end. end. So we're gonna take that end, and I'm gonna start with this green. I'm gonna dunk it in there so I get a good sized glob of green on the end, and that's gonna be how I make my light. Now your lights don't have to be right on the strand. They can, they can be off of it. You don't have to see where it attaches to the strand. When you're doing these, kind of pay attention to where it loops around things. So one way to make it look really dynamic is if, for example, right here, I could make this cord here appear to be in front of the tree or behind it. And it's all based on how I place the lights. And you'll see that a little bit more in action when we get there. So I'm gonna keep this order in mind when I'm going. I'm gonna go and lay down the green first all throughout leaving maybe about an inch and a quarter in between each green one, roughly. It doesn't have to be real perfect. Um, and then I'm gonna come back with each color and do the same thing. So I'm just gonna touch that to the canvas and there's a green bulb. About an inch and a half later, I'm gonna do another one. And it can go on either side of the cord because you know those cords get twisted and the lights aren't always in the same place. So see, because I put that light on top of this branch, that tells the eye that this cord is running between you and the branch. If I left that dot off, then it would tell the eye that the cord is behind the branch and the branch is between you and the cord. But if you, if that doesn't cross your mind while you're doing this and at the end you realize you didn't pay attention to that, don't worry about it. Somebody's really going to have to watch and follow the cord and really scrutinize every bulb to see that. So I am gonna skip the green bulb here because I want it to be behind this branch. So I'm gonna pretend it was right about here and I'm gonna go on. So there, maybe there. I wiped off the end of my brush and now I'm gonna go for the cadmium red. I'm gonna make sure that the red always comes after the green and I'm gonna try to put it on the opposite side of the cord from the green just to make it a little more interesting. Now yellow. And I wiped it off again. Now we're going to do blue. If you find that you have too much space after you've added all of your colors, just go ahead and add some more. You can add some extras. There's no rule against it. Let's give our birds a little more personality. They need eyes. 
So I'm gonna move to my angle brush because the end of it is a little smaller. And I'm going to start by getting some black and making a little dot for an eye. And this one's gonna have a much smaller dot. He's a much smaller bird. Now we're gonna let that black dry and then I'm gonna come in with a tiny bit of white done the same way and put a tiny speck of white in the center of each eye. While we wait for the bird's eyes to dry, we're gonna add one last thing and that is some snow. So I have titanium white and silver. This is a metallic silver. And we're gonna make some snow with these. So I have my big flat brush and I just, I wet it down and I just wiped once on the edge of the jar. So it still has quite a bit of water in it. I'm gonna come over here to my white and silver. Notice I'm getting both of them. And I don't know if you can see, but when I squish it like that, some water wells up in the brush. So there's quite a bit of water still in here. You don't want it to be so wet that it's running all over the place. You just want it to be wet enough that we can flick this paint easily. So I've got a good mixture of the two on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my thumb like this. I'm gonna angle it toward the canvas about, about four inches away from the canvas. And I'm going to run my thumb down the edge slowly so that it gently flicks paint onto the canvas. Get some more when you need. And make sure that your brush stays moving around as you flick so that you don't end up with like a big line of white or silver somewhere. For the most part, you're only really gonna be able to see this on the bird and the tree, but I think that's kind of fun. It, it kind of brings this frosty background in on top of the tree and the bird. It makes it look like it might be snowing just a little bit. Just keep doing that until you're satisfied. Get a little bit of it on the ground too. And when no more paint's coming off your brush, make sure you get a little more water and a little bit more paint. If you get something like this, the little streak, just kind of gently wipe it away. Ooh, that one got a little crazy. spot here. There. And this little bird kind of lost his eye a bit. Let's go ahead and just put it back in. We're going to take the end of this brush and a tiny hint of white and just give each bird a tiny speck of white in the center of their eye. So there is our fun holiday bird with the Christmas lights and a Christmas shaped tree. I hope you had a good time and I hope this painting helps get you ready for the holiday season. You can definitely take this as a starting point and really elaborate on it. Make the branches way more detailed, add more birds, different types of birds, give the birds more details themselves different colors in the background, anything you can think of, let this be a starting point for you. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure to share it with your friends. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.